risk is inevitable because end of the day, if you don't try, you don't know. Okay, I was actually looking into starting my own business back then. And I'm pretty comfortable in two things. One is law enforcement. Another one is cooking. Because that's what I've, I really enjoy doing throughout my life. I've been doing law enforcement for nearly 20 years, working for the government for 20 years, being an employee. I was reaching a stage where, okay, this is enough. Let's look at something else in life. And what else I can do other than law enforcement? And cooking was something that is very close to me because my mom and uh, my family used to be part of um, you know, hospitality industry back home in Singapore. So naturally, I leaned towards that. And um, that's when MasterChef was promoting for season 10. And uh, I took that opportunity and I said, okay, let's give, give it a go and try and see whether am I... Uh, dare to survive in the industry. My wife is the reason why I applied for the show. Uh, she's a very big fan of the show. And she diligently watched every episode, every season. We started uh, watching MasterChef from 2012 onwards when we migrated to Australia. So literally, she was watching like three, four seasons uh, prior to that. And yeah, she's the one who recommended me. And she made sure that when I applied and I went, when I got through to the judges' audition, I had about one month. So I, I had to binge watch a lot of episodes. After work, I come home, I'll practice, I'll binge watch two or three episodes if I, I go to bed. So I covered season eight and season nine in within a month. Obviously, I will not be able to learn everything within that one month. So it was a learning process. Um, I went in with a basic understanding of the competition and I had a bit of a basic understanding of how to cook certain dishes. Like I have my strength, uh, which is pretty much Asian, Malaysian, Indian kind of a cuisine, but that is not enough to win a competition like of that scale. I need to understand other cuisines, other techniques, uh, desserts. So there was plenty of things that need to be learned and I was lucky enough that I managed to stay in the competition till the end which gave me that time to learn as I was progressing in the competition. Actually, pretty early in the competition I realized that I have a very good potential of going very far in the competition. I was not thinking about winning the competition. I wanted to be there for as long as possible. The very first mystery box, when I won the mystery box, then subsequently I was winning a few challenges one after another. The moment I got my first immunity pin, that's when I thought, okay, I have a good chance. Actually, um, $250,000 is not enough <laughs> to, <laughs> to set up a restaurant or a business of what I was planning to do. Originally, I planned to do a small takeaway or a cafe kind of a concept. But my win in the competition and the kind of exposure I got because of MasterChef made me set up something that I never even imagined. I started up doing pop-ups, traveling overseas. I learned a lot from different different chefs, how they go about doing restaurants. Because it's totally a different ball game. When it comes to cooking for a small group, to cooking for a mass production, uh, for like a restaurant kind of a setup. Yeah, everything went into the restaurant on top of my savings. Uh, it was pretty overwhelming at the moment um, because MasterChef Australia is not only popular in Australia. It's a global, they have about 50 over countries, something around there. I think 50 or 80, I can't remember. Uh, watch the show and there's a very strong following in overseas like India, South Africa, uh, um, what do you call, um, UK. So when I start traveling the world, I realized, okay, there's a lot of potentials everywhere. And there was a lot of um, proposals was coming through and I had to filter that, making, sh making sure that I'm making the right decision. At the same time, I have a dream of starting my own business. I want to run my own restaurant, how I'm going to navigate that. So the first one year, 
it was a challenge it was a challenge uh because being new to the industry i need to make a lot of decisions based on my own life experience pretty much so i made a lot of mistakes a lot of good decisions but i learned as i was progressing in the traveling the whole thing as a journey now it wasn't a fun thing i it took me a long time to uh, no to go back there the reason why i go back was pretty much was covid was the reason we started the whole restaurant with a very big hype uh we were doing extremely well it was summer was buzzing it was a very good start but everything went pear shaped in covid everything went down the uh hill from a chef i was becoming more of a a business owner i was i was not thinking about creativity i was not thinking about uh how i can create new dishes and all that instead i was just focusing on how i can survive i want this business to run um not say profit at least break even kind of a point during that period so i was losing my creativity and when master chef approached me i thought okay this would be a good time let's go back to where it all started let's go back there let's rekindle back my my creativity my passion for food let's go back and see why i wanted to start this journey from the beginning so that was the whole reason why i went back there the first one was i i was a bit more um, how to say i wasn't free and easy but at the same time i don't have that level of um, expectations and stress during the show but the second time around since day one everybody knows you are a winner everyone knows that you can cook well so the expectation is higher my fans i uh, know that you know this guy can do well he have done it before so there there was uh, some kind of expectations from them and running multiple businesses and doing the show you had a lot in your plate it was tough i think it's the exposure i think um, if i've never gone into master chef i would have still maybe started a small restaurant in adelaide or a cafe but i wouldn't have got this kind of exposure what chefs do for 10 15 years to achieve in terms of publicity marketing and all, and uh, getting that kind of accreditation i was able to get it within a year but it wasn't easy because uh, this industry is a very tough industry uh, in order yeah i can i i would have won a master chef competition but that doesn't mean that i will be accepted in the industry because people spend 10 years 12 years you know uh, perfecting the trade and just because i won a competition that doesn't mean that i will earn that a creation so it took me one year or maybe almost two years until i get my first award for the restaurants and so on so forth like consecutively we are readers choice uh, best restaurant in adelaide for asian cuisine so these are the things that put me in par with the chefs who are in the industry for a long time so they, you will get your your respect and your creation in the industry if you make good food it took me some time to let people know that yes this guy is not only a tv chef he can cook good decent food for restaurants i won't say advice is if you have a idea and if you want to try something you have to give it a go go and try go and try uh risk is inevitable there is a certain level of risk you have to still try because end of the day if you don't try you don't know whether you have the potential to achieve your vision or dream whatever you want to call it yeah. please try